God, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for life. Yes, Lord. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word. Sent down from glory. Many things. You were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. Gentle Redeemer, Gentle Redeemer, God with us, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the living, you are the living awesome ruler, awesome ruler, Gentle Redeemer, Gentle Redeemer, God with us. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. Major bone. Major bone. But on a tree. On a tree. We to save the For you are. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call That's you. What we call you. Major bone. Major bone.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth right where you are. Thank you. Let's lift something to the Lord. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the shedding of the blood. Thank God. Thank God. He got us so we can live this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me call Jesus. 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 Can you help me call Jesus? Can you help me call him? Can you help me call him? Can you help me call him? Has he been good to you? Are you glad this morning? That he died for you. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. I want to talk, preach for a few moments from the subject, suffering for righteousness sake. Suffering for righteousness sake. Amen. By the time of our text, the Apostle Peter shifts from his teaching on service and submission to suffering. It was important that Christians who were in exile know the reality of suffering for righteousness' sake. While there is joy in serving God, he didn't want them to become naive and blindsided 
concerning the attacks, struggles, and trials that would come just for being a Christian. And so many of us need to hear this message in a day where we believe that having faith only produces favor, healing, success, and perpetual joy without failure, hell, storms, and misery. It seems like with every successive generation, we are diminishing in our tolerance for enduring hardness as good soldiers. Used to be a time people struggled, went through certain mistreatment, endured certain pain, but still kept their faith in God and still were determined to push forward and not backward. Nowadays, we can't live without certain conveniences and luxuries. When there was a time when all we had was fans or screens in the window. Now, now we got showers and, and my sons seem to can't take a shower unless they got body blowers all over their body. But I had to remind them that there was a time we only had one bathtub. And that you had to clean the ring from somebody else taking their bath <laughs> before you could take your bath. There's a time where we had bus fares with a transfer slip. Y'all ain't hear me. There was a time when we had Cloverland crates. We, we, didn't, we didn't have a basketball hoop. We cut the bottom out of the crate, hung it up on a telephone pole or on a tree just to play basketball. And there was a time where only one meal was prepared for dinner that everybody was going to eat. And if you didn't like it, you weren't hungry. <laughs> but you got to the point where you got hungry enough that you would eat what was put on the table. But now, what's killing our faith and our future is our inability to negotiate, endure, and maximize our seasons of suffering. Doesn't matter how much faith you have, your faith is going to take you through a trying season. And Peter makes a clear distinction about what it means to suffer for righteousness sake. Because all of us who are suffering are not necessarily suffering for righteousness sake. Some of us are suffering the consequences of our sin. Peter makes the distinction. He said, it's good when you suffer for doing what is right. In another passage of scripture, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There are some things 
that we do that are out of order and they are out of the will of God. And you can't call suffering consequences suffering for righteousness sake. It's going to get quiet. Excessive drinking of alcohol causes liver damage that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Substance abuse causes physical, mental, and emotional maladies that have nothing to do with Jesus. Overeating and bad eating causes obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes that have nothing to do with Jesus. Sexual promiscuity causes STDs and HIV that has nothing to do with Jesus. Adultery causes divorce. Breaking the law causes life in prison. You can't do wrong and call it right. Some of us are suffering because of the consequences of sin. And then others of us are suffering for the choices we selected. The Old Testament King Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. But some of us are suffering on the wrong path because we didn't allow the Lord to be our guide. You hooked up with the wrong person. God didn't tell you to do that. You did that. You launched out into the deep too quickly. You let your ambition, your anxiety, and your appetite drive you into adversity. I had a young preacher come into my office the other day repenting and saying, I got ahead of myself. I tried to do it my way. And, and it took 10, 15 years for them to figure out that they made some choices that they should not have made. The prodigal son was not suffering because of sin or righteousness. He just wanted what he wanted when he wanted it. And some of us have lived long enough to testify that some things are worth the wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. If I, if I clothe the grass of the field, if I could feed the birds in the air, if you hold on a little while, I'll take care of you so good that you'll be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. All right. I shall not want. Subsequently, Peter, in this text, prepares us for Christian suffering. He teaches us that it's, it's impossible to escape suffering even when you're doing good. Tap somebody and tell them you can't run from it. You can't, you can't escape it. 
And he reassures us that when we suffer for righteousness sake, we're still blessed. Yeah. See, sometimes you catch in hell and you think that you're cursed or you think that you're outside of the will of God. But I need to park here parenthetically and tell you what the Bible says that when you suffer for righteousness sake, you're still blessed. I need you to affirm it. I'm struggling, but I'm still blessed. I'm sick right now, but I'm still blessed. I'm lonely, but I'm blessed. I'm broke, but I'm blessed. I got some trials that I'm dealing with, but somebody ought to clap your hands and open your mouth and shout, I'm still blessed. Don't ever let the devil make you think that because you're going through something that you ain't blessed. It could be worse. But God still got me in his hand. I'm in a fiery furnace, but it ain't burning me up. I'm in a lion's den, but they haven't devoured me yet. I'm, I'm just waiting to see who going to give God praise that can testify things ain't as well as I want them to be. But I still got something to thank God for. So, so, so Peter says it's important for me to describe for you what suffering for righteousness sake looks like. He says in this text that as a child of God, <laughs> blessed and highly favored, anointed and appointed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet that you will suffer. And one of the things you will suffer is disrespect. Come on, lean over and tell somebody disrespect. Yeah, yeah. I know you, I know you think you important. I, think, I know you think you large and in charge. I, I know you think because you got a certain title and you got the favor of God on your life that certain people ain't going to say or do certain things to you. But I came to tell you the devil is a liar. When you are a child of God, that's when the enemy comes after you the most. He says, and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Now, now I, need, I, need, I need to stop and tell you that what he just said to you is that as a Christian, somebody is going to threaten you. Somebody's going to attack you. Somebody's going to try to annoy you. But listen what he says. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Because being a Christian doesn't make people respect you. It makes people resent you. See, 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 some people know where you came from. Some people know what you did not have. Some people know what you ain't qualified for. And somehow you have risen above them. And you did it not by climbing their ladder, but by getting on the kingdom's escalator. I wish I had a witness here. Some folk that thought you was going to be at the bottom never thought that you would make it to the top. And if the truth be told, you didn't think it either. I wish I, I wish I had somebody in here that could testify, Dante, I had no idea I was going to be this blessed. I had no idea I was going to go through the doors that I've gone through. People have been looking at me, and they've been looking at the glitter, but they don't know what I had to go through to get to where I am. Yeah. 
Every time Jesus showed up where the devil was, the devil felt threatened. Read your Bible. He went into the synagogue and the devil was comfortable. And the devil hollered out, Jesus, what do we have to do with you? Leave us alone. He went on the other side of the Sea of Galilee and met a man that was possessed with the legion of devils. And the devil said, leave us alone. Because whenever you show up with Jesus on the inside, the devil on the outside gets upset. You walk in the job saying, I ain't done nothing to nobody. You ain't done nothing to nobody. But the light of God that's on the inside of you makes the darkness of the devil uncomfortable. The anointing of God always trumps the authority of the government, worldly powers, and spiritual wickedness. And the anointing always challenges our moral and our spiritual accountability. So the enemy of our faith, the enemy of our favor and our future will try to get in our heads and in our hearts with external threats to our safety and our sanity and our stability. But I got an antidote. The antidote is our spirituality over our material reality. Y'all ain't reading this Bible. He says, don't be afraid of their threats. And let me tell you how to overcome their threats. He said, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Which means when you come against the devil that's coming against you, you can't depend on what you drive and where you live and how much money you got. You got to be able to testify, I am who I am because of who lives on the inside of me. I wish I had a witness in here that could testify greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world David told Goliath you come at me with a sword and with a spear but I come to you in the name of the Lord God is there a witness in here Take my money, take my car, take my house, but I still got power. I still got joy. Is there anybody up in here that knows I may have some issues and some weaknesses and some frailties and some flaws, but as long as I got faith, you better not mess with me. He, he, he says, suffering for righteousness sake means that you'll suffer disrespect and you'll suffer disagreements look at somebody and tell them everybody ain't gonna agree with you Lord have mercy that rocked my world corporal when Negroes didn't agree with me even in church you get upset because because you always want it your way. And you want everybody to see it like you see it. Look at somebody tell them, ain't nobody studying you. <laughs> let me read the Bible. I'm going to let you go. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, watch this, with meekness and fear. All right, I gotta break this down. Because when the enemy sees what you say, <laughs> that you are anchored in Christ, he will draw you in to meaningless arguments and debates to test your faith. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody came to me the other week after revival, just finished preaching. We just finished shouting. 
And they came to me to tell me about some experience they had at work and they wanted to ask questions and they were doubting their faith and all that kind of stuff. And then they tried to draw me in to that foolish pastor, give me the answer so I can take back and whip their butts. I said, well, first of all, you ain't got no business even being in them kind of conversations. Some stuff you ought not give your emotional energy to. And I'm making up my mind tonight. I just finished preaching. I just had joy. I love you as your pastor, but leave me alone. I'm going home. You ain't got, you ain't got time. Child, the older I get, the less mind I got to be thinking stupid stuff. Come on, come on, listen, I'm only 47. Some of y'all in here 60, 70, and 80 years old. You ain't got time to think but one good thought of that. I be doggone if I give the one thought to a negative thought. If you're, if you're not careful, you'll get frustrated. Trying to prove who you are to people that don't even care. And the people who don't even know who they are. Preach, Dante. But in order to prevent frustration, Peter says, we have to overcome the need, get this, for everybody to agree with us. Oh, God. Because when you know that you know what God has done for you, you don't need nobody to agree with you. Matter of fact, you don't need nobody to affirm you. Come on, do I have a witness in here? Some of y'all can shout over what you know about God. Have I got a witness? The Bible says just be ready to defend not yourself, but your hope. Come on, somebody say defend your hope. He says defend it in humility. Defend it in meekness and in fear. You ain't got to be arrogant. You ain't got to have your, your, your hips up on your shoulders. Help me preach up in here. You, you ain't got to put nobody down. But when you know God for yourself, you may not know every scripture to quote. You may not have a seminary education. You may not know Walter Brueggemann. You may not know systematic theology. You may not know situational ethics, but you know what God has done for you. You know where God has brought you from. You know what God is doing for you. You ought to testify, I trust God because he never failed me yet. I trust God because he made ways out of no way. I wish you'd shake somebody's hand and give them one good reason why you still trust in God. He, he says, you will suffer I ain't going to finish this sermon. He said, you will suffer disrespect. You will suffer disagreement. And then you'll suffer defamation of character. Oh, they're going to talk about you. Look at somebody and tell them they're going to talk about you. Oh, it's going to get worse. Look back at them and tell them, and if you ain't careful... I might talk about you. Oh, y'all ain't lived long enough yet. He says, he says, he says, having a good conscience that when, not if, they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. <sighs> Man, has anybody ever done you wrong? Yeah. And it seemed like don't nothing happen to them. 
for doing you wrong. But you got to rest in the fact that God said vengeance is mine. Said the Lord, I will repay. And Jesus said it would be better if a millstone would be hung about their necks and they drowned in the sea than to mess with one of my children. I came to tell you as a child of God, people are going to talk about you negatively and nonsensically. It ain't that you're perfect, but they'll never be able to hit the target. Some folks say everything about you, and you be saying to yourself, if they only knew. That's how good God can cover you. God will let them talk about stuff you ain't doing while covering some stuff that you are doing. Have I got a witness here? God's got a way of causing some people who lie on you to get smaller while you get bigger. That's why God sent me back here to tell you, let what you do speak longer and louder than what they say. Have I got a witness here? And never allow your fame to override your favor. Because people may not know your name, but you can thank God that he supplies every one of your needs. I feel like preaching up in here. So Peter closes this chapter by encouraging us to know that we are in good company when we suffer for righteousness sake. Look at somebody and tell them you ain't in this by yourself. He said for Christ also suffered once for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us back to God being put to death in the flesh God help me preach right here and one might ask how is that encouraging when in the end Christ died but fortunately this morning that's not the end of the verse because this text teaches us there are divine rewards that can't be stopped when you're suffering for righteousness sake help me preach right quick shake somebody's hand and say sometimes you gonna suffer for doing what's right sometimes you gonna suffer for doing what's good you love folk that hate you you pray for folk that despitefully use and abuse you you bless folk that curse you sometimes you don't know why trouble has come your way but I came to tell somebody though the night may be long though the enemy may be on your trail sometimes disrespected sometimes disagreed with sometimes uh, defamed but I came to tell you that trouble doesn't last always I need 20 folk to help me preach put it in the house and tell them trouble don't last always you might be suffering but the Bible says that suffering for righteousness sake will never prevent your recovery somebody shout recovery that's what the Bible says that Jesus was put to death in the flesh comma but he was made alive by the spirit somebody in the house ought to get excited when you realize that death is not fatal and death is not 
not final. It's merely a portal to eternal life. Come here, Jesus. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it weren't so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Bible says if this earthly tabernacle would be dissolved, we got another building eternal in the heavens. Y'all ain't shouting yet. Job said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Shake somebody's hand and tell them the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That's the wrong hand. Look at somebody else. Tell them the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That's good news because if he gave it and if he took it away that means he still has it in his hand. Somebody I'm going to close right here. I got two more points but I'm going to lift them up right here. Shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and tell them whatever you lost God still got it which means we can't lose. I need everybody to get on your feet. Throw back your head and tell somebody sometimes I'm going through. Sometimes I'm catching hell. Sometimes I feel like giving up. But I'm so glad that weeping may endure for a night. But joy, 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 joy will come in the morning. Somebody ought to thank God that while weeping may endure for a night, you didn't weep that long because God let you sleep most of the night. Somebody ought to praise God that whatever you were going through, whatever the devil tried, you were sleeping on it. You were resting in God while God fought your battles. Lift up your hand, throw back your hand, and shout hallelujah. Anyhow, yeah, yeah, yeah. people tell them recover 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 quit worrying about what you're going through. Whatever you lose in the process, God will give it back to you through his promise. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. No good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. Doing right will always pay off. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all this world go free? I heard Deacon Stanley pray, no, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. 
this consecrated cross I bear till death shall set me free and then go home my crown to wear for there is a crown for me there's a bright crown waiting for me in that new Jerusalem and I ain't got to wait till the battle is over I can shout right now come on I need every suffering servant to shout anyhow come on thank God any I dare you to praise him anyhow I want to say praise God for those of you who continue to support the work of ministry in our church through your giving. Those of you who have been giving, you have been making a difference and you've been keeping our church alive and moving forward to the glory of God even over this past year. I ask that if you'd like to give, that you do so on our website at southernbaptistchurch.org. You can download the Givelify app, find our church and our address, which is on the screen, and you can give there. Or you can text the word give to the number that's on the screen, and you can give spiritually as well as securely as you follow the prompts. Please know you can mail in, call in, or drop off your gifts to the church. And as you give, you are giving as unto the Lord, and God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you real, real good.